<laughs> but all right, what do I want to be? What do I want to be when I'm 40, 45? I want to be a fat barroom blues guitar playing fucking, you know, stamp them out Greenwich Village uh, guy? Or do I want to at least, you know, have a shot at some kind of sanity? So that's probably why. Just to try and be a little better. This is like crunch time. We're like crunch time now. We've got to record on Saturday and it almost fell through and the, the studio wasn't ready and then a buddy of mine hooked me up with this really good studio so now we're a go again. But that's a little bit of drama. That'll like transfer to some ticket sales. It's record sale. <laughs> but we have a little bit of drama now, right Sid? What's that? We had like a last minute studio cancellation but then we got one again. And Did you tell me you were moving? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it was also other stuff going That's on. Whatever you do, don't tell me. you were to when you were sent the trauma. Where are you yeah. moving? I'm moving to Maine. Close by. Huh? Close by. Maine. Maine. It's literally, <laughs> as far as Amtrak is concerned, <laughs> the farthest point that you could travel in the United States. Even Fairbanks? Well, yeah, in the continent. <laughs> is that, the, that, the, that would the, still in be the continent. real U.S. Yeah. What prompted the move? Um, my wife got a job. Teaching, and we've been trying to get out of Los Angeles for like the day we got here seven years ago. But yeah, I'm I'm so done with LA. I mean, really, it's the only thing of any kind of real substance or whatever is uh, well, two things: an easy job, and uh, and this band. I mean, other than that, it's kind of like I've, I was over LA six months after I got here. I've been here. I've been here. I figured it out. I got here. I started college in '87. I've been here almost 20 years. I've been here 13 years. 13 years you've been here then? I've been 10 years here in this house. 10 years. Yeah, that's pretty frightening. We were talking about this morning. We're right, we're looking to get out of here at some point. Where do you, <laughs> where do you want to go? Said, where do you want to relocate? Thinking about Northern California, like Mendocino. Acting is pretty much, you know, dried up to the point of. Almost to living in the music is. That could be good for your music career, though. What? Going up north? No, just no longer an actor. Yeah. Why? <laughs> it's actually the thing that's helped me. Because now be you can pay for albums. Uh, well, I'm not talking about practicality, but yeah. image. Oh, nobody knows me as an actor. Back in five minutes. Ah, oh, dang it. Quiet with the door. Leave me alone, Jim. Quiet with the door. Leave <laughs> me alone. Jim. So Sid Hillman goes to Mendocino. Why Mendocino? Mmm. Which, I don't know, actually. Just said Northern California. Thinking about it. Look for a small town? Yeah. I like LA as far as big cities go. I just don't think. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in a big city necessarily, so probably in the next year or so. It really is up to the, the printing press kind of thing. If that takes off, then not takes off, but if we can eke out a, a, a sustenance, then we can then we can relocate somewhere. Because then I don't not only tied, only only tied here for acting and you know the quartet and since Jack's leaving. No, we were gonna pretty much we were pretty much gonna shut it down anyway. So, but the the thing is, is I was thinking, is just like there's just no. Let's say this record comes out. And then we get a tour. It doesn't matter that you're in Maine, really, because no. because it, then it's just like okay, well, that's not going to be unemployed. Well, but you know, I mean, like it, either you're employed there or you're employed here, and it's, it's just safe. it's really like okay, we're going on tour. Can you go? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And a whiskey, but it left me on
Considering it's all new material, you know, flush some things out, I guess. They're all kind of stiff, I suppose. Why are you living in Pasadena? Okay. Well, let me know. Okay. Are you out of debt? Glad it's over, man. Yeah? Yeah. I think we did okay. It was good to play some of the songs, but uh, just didn't want to play the show, I think, at the end of the day. So I was happy to finish up. Man. slow yeah not like a rehearsal we've been having a good time at practice so better luck next time and more people is always good but there's no one at the uh, rehearsal studio so yeah so there goes that theory <laughs> there you go first time out with these songs though not so bad was it first time out with these songs yeah uh, It's a, it's a matter of him keeping me in the band, you know, 
is that he supplies me with uh, coffee on demand and uh, a jug of water. Um, and it's worked out pretty good because he, he makes good coffee. That's pretty much the only reason why I'm still in the band is the fact that he can, uh, he brews his own beans. Uh, he, he roasts his own beans. And occasionally he'll, he'll scramble his own eggs if he has to. So uh, that's been, that's worked out pretty good. So this is a real guitar. It's a 56 Les Paul Special. And this is Sid's fake guitar, which is a, a 93 Les Paul Special. But it's a fake one. Mine's the real one. Mahogany. It is white. It's very I thought you were kidding. That's because it's got, uh, it sounds good. I might try to be nerdy and play it up here like you. Um, I, have, I need to have some recourse. Of I think just by default, however you play it would be nerdy <laughs> to some extent. I asked him. Sorry, the camera and all. I asked him. I asked him what it was like, and he said, it's just exactly like yours, but cool. <laughs> How did you feel about that last show? Um... Well, it was all new material mm -hmm. that we had never played live. And, uh, I mean, I think we've kind of gotten to the point where uh, almost any show in Los Angeles is uh, a pain in the ass on so many levels just because, especially after Sid and my, my experience in Europe where they actually are like into the music and treat you uh, well and are glad you're there and it was just you know you knew it was coming but when we got there it was eye-opening to be back into that kind of just oblivion the, the rock and roll oblivion of of, Amer of America where either if you're not really packing them in you basically are just you know you're, you're fighting it the whole way so I think on that level, I knew kind of what we were getting into, so, and then we, you know, got pushed back, we went on late and all that, but I thought we pulled it off pretty good, all things considered. The stage volumes were all over the place, so we couldn't really hear each other and all that, but it was, you know, it was cool. It was good to play. Shows that are special circumstance shows, and then we, I go, okay, well, because it's just this special circumstance, I'll do it, and then every time I, I regret it, and then every, the next time I go, well, this is gonna be different because, you know, last time we were opening this, Booking agent called me from New York and said, <clears throat> you know, I heard of you guys from this musician here, and I've got this band that I book called The Silos, and we want you guys to open. And I said, great, because I would do that, you know, if it's a one band thing. We open for the band, that's fine. And so I said, great, that's excellent, it's here, and it's a perfect circumstance. So he's like, okay, it's all set, just call <clears throat> the venue and get it all set up. <clears throat> So I call the venue and she doesn't call me back and then I call her and she spends five minutes telling me why email is really the best way to get in touch with her. And all I was just find, wanted to find out is just sort of load in time and the kind of logistics of it at all. So she explains to me why email is the better way to go. And then uh, and I finally get an email from her saying that we're second on. And so I said, well, that's odd because we're supposed to be opening. So I emailed her back and I said, second on, I don't get it. And then she emails back that we're second of four bands. So I just thought, here we go. Again, you know, half hour set. And so I called the booking agent. I said, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for thinking of us, but I just don't want to do the show. And, um, and he said, well, I you know, he was really nice. And I don't think it was his fault at all. But he said, you know, I really want you guys to do the show. And I said, a half hour set's just not even worth our time anyway. And he said, well, don't promote it at all. Just show up and play. And I want you to meet, to meet the silos. And I said, okay, well, maybe, you know, I'll think about it. And then the first band dropped out, so they didn't replace them. And so they gave us a 45-minute set at the end. And we ended up doing it. And that wasn't that bad. That show wasn't... That was a good that show. That was kind of fun. And there was people there, actually. That was actually... That was actually, it show. turned out to be kind of fun. But it, it was, was still just the, 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 the lead-up, though, was just the same thing. I got that gut thing in my stomach. As soon as I contacted the venue, I got that knot in my stomach because I just thought, this is going to be crap again.
What's that? My volume is off. Gotcha. Here we go. <laughs> See, I was digging that one. Uh, the is good. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I guess. I'm just like, yeah, that's it. He's like, yeah. There's so much more movement in that solo than the ones before. Tom? I'm good. Pomegranate? It? Oh, it's pomegranate? Pomegranate grapefruit. Yeah. Dude, what love was took as long as that did? Dude, you had that totally written. That song was fucking hard to play, man. I know. I mean, I can imagine. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you last your turn. That, which cue are you using? Any other general thoughts about uh, the band, sort of uh, Jack, uh, Jack moving to Maine, what that means for the band, what that means for Sid? Well, you know, it's always harder when guys get older and start having families and babies and stuff like that. It's a lot harder to kind of maintain the rock and roll aesthetic of, you know, four guys in a van. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully we can make this the biggest quartet record so far. And what do you? What, what sort of audience are you targeting with uh, what kind of music that these guys make? You know, the sort of the AAA world, the um, not the kids, not the oldsters. You know, probably the you know twenty to forty-five year olds, essentially. You know, there's there is a big audience for roots-based music in this country, but it's a little hard to capture sometimes because it's pretty spread out. A lot of artists who American artists who traffic in the roots music world these days do ver do much better in Europe because it's much um, it's it's less compartmentalized. You feel good about uh, the tour that he did with uh, with Jack recently? It was a really good way of kind of setting himself up for the future. I mean, in Europe, you got to pay your dues, you got to go there, you got to play shows, you got to do a slow build. So he's going back again in a couple of months, and you know, hopefully that will be at least a one or two year thing for a long time and he'll, he'll, he'll build an audience there and a good audience there and a loyal audience there so um, you know again regardless of what happens here you could always have something going on in Europe as well. About the manager? Yeah, what are your thoughts on the band, the future, today, I, tomorrow? Today, I, I didn't think it was going to take this long to get set up. How do you feel about everything sort of winding down with the band? I feel like it's winding down more than some people are willing to admit. How's that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I, I'm thinking that, I just hope it can be marketed, let's put it that way, that if someone can sink their teeth into a couple of tunes and get them on the radio here or in Europe or whatever. That would be a good thing and if that doesn't happen then I don't see much else happening with this record than happened with any other records. But that kind of doesn't matter to me because I'm sort of in it for the company and the musical experience which both are great. Um, but it's a tough nut to crack, I think, what we're trying to do. We have, I remember even years ago, I ran into an old guitar player from a band I used to be on. It's like, oh, so you quartet, you guys got a lot of indie cred. Which is true, and which almost is inversely proportional to sort of success, broadly defined. So, I don't know. Being well respected by our peers, is that good? What's the matter? Does it matter to you? What's the most important thing to you? About this band? Mm-hmm. 
having this record sound as good as it feels in practice. We've been, recently, we've been having really great band moments where we're all just sweating and smiling at the end of the song, and that is, I think, something that's, I don't want to say new, but it's definitely realized more often and more fully um, with this group of tunes than it has been. I think, uh, I don't know, Mike and I are playing better than we ever have together. And I think that's happening on these tunes. I think I feel much less restricted. I mean, Sid describes it as, you know, we've been playing together for so long, and the parts that we choose and sort of write for the songs are, you know, right in line with his vision. Um, but to me, I just feel like we're really gelling. I think Jack is just an amazing guitar player. And uh, that's kind of a great loss. Uh, to me, I don't see how it's, unless something happens commercially. So it's all like on the manager. And I think we'll do fine. If the recording comes out well, and the manager can get something rolling, then we could convene for a tour or something. That'd be awesome. But it's kind of on the marketing end, I think, at this point. It's going all right. Yeah? Yeah. So, Are you happy with everything so I am. far? It's coming together. Really good. I, I, it always starts out, you know, you have no idea you didn't want to do drums what it's going to be. Oh, you know what? Let's do drum first. Go okay. Set up. All right. Let's set up for Mike's drums, and we're going to do Cloud this afternoon, which is on another reel. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyhow. So I started hearing stuff finally, and I think it's really, it's, I'm very happy with it. So. Because it's at first you just never know, and now it's kind of starting to come together. So we're really almost done. After yeah. today, um, I may have some a little bit of acoustic guitar left to do, but and I have one vocal to do. But it's we're about 80 percent, like 85 percent done. 87. We're 87 percent done. 8750. 87.5e. So, anyway, but tiring, breakneck, and. Uh, so you don't you don't want to mic that up like uh, you just want to put one forty seven. I just microphone. want to try one microphone. I just want to see how it sounds. Okay. You know, for cloud this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. But I guess behind him. What's that? I guess behind him if you want to try that. But I. I'll try from the front. Okay, just like away though. You know, yeah, I really yeah. want it roomy. Keep the click in the final mix. You coming in? Yeah. You liked it. Not good. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to play. It sounds like we all got off on the click a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Jim's bass is purposefully a little lazy, and I think it was just fucking you up. And that's what I was worried about, because I don't know if you could hear the U. So playing with the click, it was like... It sounds much better now with just that kick. You make it solid. The bass is Sad. I'm very sad to leave to let to have Jack be gone. And uh, started to hit me today. That was the that was the only thing I started to realize the finality of him going. And and that's a and that was but he got to come tonight and have dinner and with us and stuff. So, but it was very sad to see him go. Were you sad to see Jack go, Jim? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck. I'm sad. Yeah, I guess. Piano, right? What? Piano's done on all the songs. Piano's done. It was sad. Huh? I got to know Jack. I think a little bit better than ever. I think in just these last couple of weeks. Oh yeah. It's a nice guy, that Jack. I spent that time with him every day, and I oh, still yeah. really like him. So that was. A, I figured that's always a testament to people if you spend tons of time with them. Like we survived tour. Yeah. You and I. And we still well, we survived we like each other. I'm yeah. saying you and I. Yeah, it's true. Mike, you and I. <laughs> yeah. One of us didn't <laughs> survive to her. That came, then came Jack. It just goes to show you. Yeah. But anyhow. So 
was just, I don't know, it's just like a bummer. He's such a great player. And it was it was very nice playing with Jack, wasn't it? it was Having him nice. in the band, it was like, those rehearsals were so fun. Huh? He's a consummate professional. Yeah. Playing wise. But also just great, I know, but that was just great. We just had, we all clicked. He goes, I want to do it again. Good, man. Same thing like Sam was doing earlier. Uh, you, uh, yeah, it's cool. you know, I, I can find with the body. I want offbeats in it? I just want. I can follow your talk. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah, I've seen. There was a band not too long ago. They were here for about. A month and a half, they had a five hundred dollar a day food budget. That just pisses me off. This is so ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. Dude, you were beating on that thing forever. Songwriting wise, I don't I mean I don't think my songwriting matches anybody that I listen to, but I clearly like you know, I love Frank Black and, and the Pixies and they're the Pixies are my favorite band and Frank Black is probably my favorite songwriter, Big Chestnut. There's another guy I just love and um, Tom Waits and Elvis Costello and I just like I don't know, I just that was my background and what I grew up with, I was I loved ska like when I was in the in high school and stuff like the English beat. I still listen to the English beat. Guys like Frank Black who I just hear and I just go, God, I mean, just so free in the way that he creates and so so uh, not bound to any sort of structural rules or anything like that. And I love I love listening to stuff like that because it just it just turns me on so much. I just I like the the rule. Not, not even rule breaking, just like not even paying attention to them in the first place, you know. I like the Violent Femmes. That's the only band that I like. <laughs> and the Smiths. And I love the Smiths. Yeah, I like the Smiths. Yeah, the Smiths, yeah, the Smiths, the Smiths too rule. Um, I don't know, what do I like? All those classic rock bands. Um, I love Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> right? Zanetta, come on over here. I want to show you some of my computer. <laughs> What's the scoop? We almost playing music? Nope. Nope. Box! Pussies? What are you doing? just been writing and rehearsing for this album with uh, not really gig, you know, we gigged once or twice in the last however many months. So you're so immersed in it that you kind of, you don't really, I don't really have a sense of, you know, it's not like we're playing live a lot so I know how the band sounds and all that, it's just, and then two of us will show up to rehearse and the other two won't, so it's been kind of a little bit chaotic, so I think we've been doing a lot of good work, so it should sound good, but it's definitely uh, <clears throat> something that's almost being pieced together. And then, of course, I'm leaving at the end of the month, which is just completely in keep with how this whole 
project has project being getting the album together has come about, which is just kind of like, okay, there are two of us here, let's do what we can with two. There's three of us here, let's go, in. okay, well, Jack's leaving, we got to get the rest of the done out, the album done, got to record it really quickly instead of just kind of kick quickly. I don't, I don't really know how I feel about it. I think, you know, I, we're all playing some pretty interesting parts, and, uh, and I think it should be a really, a very good, if nothing else, it'll be a good, um, example of where we're at as a band you know what I mean just the the energy of the band the people's lives and all that um, I think this album will and probably as the other ones have it will be a really good indicator of what was going on with the band and what that exactly means I don't know First show in 14 years. Um, it's been great rehearsing with the guys. We kind of fell into a groove. I don't have any idea how the show is going to be, but um, yeah, it's it's great to be with them. And regardless of how the show goes, it's 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 totally worth doing this and putting the album out. And 
I uh, can't believe 14 years has gone by since we recorded the damn thing and um, whether yeah so it's out it's 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 in the world and that's I think for me that's the most important thing <laughs> Everybody. Welcome. Short story is um, I turned 50 in December and I said to myself for my birthday gift to myself, um, I wanted to call the band and see if they could get together for a show and they did and it's been a real treat being down here again and rehearsing with them and so uh, we'll just get rolling. So hope this, you know, let's do it. <laughs> There was a guy shooting a documentary on us and he never finished it, but about seven or eight years ago, I called him and I said, hey, do you still have that footage that you never did anything with? And he said, yes, <clears throat> and so we sent it up. And so I've been cutting a documentary, which has really been a fascinating um, experience for me to be watching this footage from 2005. And you know, you have so many fond memories and, and, and most of it, like 99% is so good and amazing and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But in this documentary, you see the 1% also, <laughs> which is pretty amazing, of uh, just us seeing the end of our time in Los Angeles and the recording process and the last show we played is on this footage and all of us after the show were like, glad that's over. You know, like it just kind of took us down and so um, it makes it that much more fun to to come here again and, and play with this same guys 14 years later. We, we rehearsed for the first time on Thursday and just came in the, and we got through the set. Like it was amazing, you know, we're all just kind of here and doing the whole thing. Um, but in that documentary, we're making our last, what was to be our last album um, called Roundabout Way. And, and it never, I did the trying to get labels, you know, and couldn't get any bites and it just sat in my safe frankly, uh, and um, as if anybody was gonna try to steal it. And, um, and, so, uh, and so it sat on my safe for about 14 years. And I kept saying, I gotta put the record, I gotta put the record out. So th this happened was my impetus to, to, to get this done. It was all done, all mastered, but um, my brilliant wife, Lisa, is a graphic designer, so she, she we, of course, left it 14 years, and then we leave it to the last minute. So she designs the album, and, and we've been doing some printing, and so we printed these hand done, Number 250, and we got it, and it's done. So it's amazing if you guys are interested in any, but anyway, it doesn't, neither here nor there, but this is a song from that, it's called Whiskey. And I think most people here probably haven't heard any of these songs, and we, that last show we played at Tangier in Hollywood just burned through because we were going in the studio the next day. I don't think there was anybody really there, it was just a practice show for us, so these were kind of new, new lives. So anyway, this one's called Whiskey. I drank your whiskey, but it left me on drunk. There are no roads 
14 year old album and uh, no, not with you. It was one of the songs, it wasn't the title of the record, and, and Lisa, my wife, actually said, you should name that the record, because it kind of describes how we ended up where we're going, we're sort of a roundabout way. Never a straight line with a quartet, as it should be. Yes. Thank you for coming to the show. It's, it was my sincere and absolute pleasure. It was pretty fun, right? You had a good time? We did have a good we time. We had a good time. We got through all the songs with a few curveballs. Uh, everyone liked it. That's a perfect response. <laughs> That's like the lighting was good. <laughs> the lighting was good. I had fun. That's what I say. I had super, fun. It was I super had fun. fun. It was super fun. I don't know, you know, how many. I, I don't think people care about that. I don't think so either. The energy was good. We had fun. Yeah, everyone was very impressed with like the fact that we got through the songs. Oh, oh, how good it sounded after so long and all that. I know. And we, there was energy, like it was the, the fuck ups, but then, but the energy was there. I, wasn't I mean, worried when about... fucked up, it was pretty bad. But that was my head fucked up really bad. <laughs> when did you fuck up? In Tercero, you didn't hear it. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, you went to the big part before. And I justified it by continuing to fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm tired of being observing. I can't keep on running and running and I'm tired of pressing down, pressing down, pressing down. I wanted what you think you want. Much younger man. I wanted what you think you want when I was a much younger man. I long since moved to here on the outskirts. Yeah. I'm gonna play it real 
little bit. Or a little piece of it. I'll play a little piece of it. When you sleep. Sleep on broken sleep. Fall to a place where all is sweet. Slowly drifting there And when you dream Dream of simple things Dream of the dreams Of kings and queens Dream of found things. And your sweet way. So silent and safe. I hope I will always be what you want me to be. Wake to a sky that is almost blue. Two wishes that always come true. So sadness will not look on you. And your sweet way. So silent and safe I hope I will Always be what you want me to be